Welcome back to Buck's Bowl. I'm David, and we're all about showing you how to do it yourself in the outdoors so you can enjoy more time with your family and friends. And one of the best ways ever to get young hunters involved early and to keep hunters involved in the sport longer are these right here. These are bases for box blinds. Um, if you've been watching other parts of our video series, I thank you. If not, if you want to see how to design this, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go down in the description box below and you're going to have to find how we design it. So I am trying to do a whole entire video series, knock everything out, show you guys everything that I know so that you can build a nice deer stand. These right here, um, fortunately for me, it's kind of nice out today. Uh, the last few days have been in the like mid 90s with sweltering heat and humidity in Wisconsin and that's just how it goes. So I built those. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Do me a favor. If you find the information useful, hit the like button. Apparently it helps a bunch. I don't know if it does. The videos that get more likes seem to get more views. So I guess it makes sense. But um, without further ado, let's get you started. The first couple minutes of the video um, are kind of just me going through what I've kind of already done up to a certain point, uh, letting you know about like cut materials and stuff like that. Um, I literally had $2,500 in lumber in the back of my $2,200 truck. So that's the way it is during the pandemic apparently. And you just gotta make best, do the best you can with what you've got. So thanks for watching guys. I greatly appreciate it. So now that we got all of our materials cut up, let's get to what you guys are really here for. And that's for us to make the base. Now, what you're gonna need, three inch or three and a half inch exterior screws. Um, I use three inch because the leg bolts are pretty solid. And cue the farm truck in three, two, one. Sorry about that again, guys. It's just, I live out in the country, so that's how life goes. You're gonna need an impact with whatever the correct bit is for your screws um when we get farther along we are going to need these little handy dandy things uh these are spax power legs these are like a leg bolt on steroids and you're going to put two of these into each corner when we put the legs on it and i'll show you how we do that when we get there and then from there you're going to need let's pan up here a little bit your stack of two by sixes that will allow you to build what you need to build. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the longer ones. Let me get these four off the top here. Oh, geez. You'll feel strong after lifting a few of these. So, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to essentially butt joint each corner. And when you do that, you want to, if you watch my video on how I design them, I explain how I stagger them out. You're gonna want your nicer side facing out and your better side to screw to facing up. Because what we ultimately want is we wanna screw this to this top part right here. And the nicer, cleaner this edge is to work with, the better your plywood goes down and not only stays, but also makes it where it squeaks less, it creaks less, all that. Now, if you're worried about that, I don't use construction adhesive unless I'm using kind of reclaimed two, uh, three quarter inch plywood sheets. If I do that or I have cutoffs, then I'll use, um, ugh, sorry, it's like 94 degrees here in Wisconsin today, so. Uh, I will use um, construction adhesive to make sure it's stuck down nice and tight if I use cutoffs from sheets that I don't need the extras. Because remember, when you cut the sheet, you're going to cut two feet off the end of it to get your six foot long sheet for a six by six like this. That gives you a piece of scrap that you can work with and eventually use for another stand if you plan your materials accordingly. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to bring it down further and then I'm going to show you how I go ahead and I attach those corners right down there to start, and then we'll go from there. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna line up the corners like this. 
Now, every single joint is gonna be like this all the way around. And remember how I told you we're gonna cut these to 46 and a half uh, lengthwise? The reason why is because when you add this inch and a half, you get your 48 inches, or sorry, this one's a six by six, 72 inches. Um, so you want it at 70 and a half for this board length, for this whole length, and for this whole length. This extra inch and a half gives you your 72, which will give you a perfect six by six square if you do it right. Now, what I do is I go in here and I start my screw. And one thing you'll notice, I don't know how well the camera will pick it up, but if you're looking kind of down, I have it at an angle across here. Now, the reason I do that is think about the ends of this grain as if they were straws. If you screw it straight in, it's like screwing into a straw. It'll pull straight out. If you go across it, you're breaking across the grains within those pack of straws, essentially, and you're giving yourself a little bit firmer of a grip. I only use two screws for this part because I use those power legs. If you're not going to use those power legs, which I definitely advise against uh, skipping those, um, if you decide to put three screws in for sure, it'll definitely help with the strength. But like I said, I don't advise it. Um, what you'll do is you'll just line this up, get this corner flush, and it doesn't take much to pull them nice and tight. Now, we'll get this one in. And yes, I have put them out the other side of this before, so just watch your hand. Don't leave it sitting here on the back side when you're screwing in. The last thing you wanna do is put a screw in your hand. Um, this should be more than enough to hold this joint for right now as we're working with it. I'm going to have to move some of this stuff around. My concrete section here is only about six foot wide, so I don't have a lot of spare room to work with, and I need it as large and flat as possible to work with. I'm going to put you guys on kind of a quick time lapse from here so that you can watch it a little quicker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish out this box on the top here, and then I'll bring you back when I start measuring out for my studs and show you how I measure out for my studs. Okay, so we went ahead, we got the outside perimeter measured out, or assembled. Now, take it, take your tape measure and go across here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go 16, 32, 48, and 64. Now, there's one thing you're gonna notice. You have a line that ends up perfectly at 48. The way it works out with a six footer, it works out really nice actually, because you'll get three beams, you'll hit your third beam right here on the 48, your one sheet of plywood will fit right here. Then the best part is you have from here to the end, and you have a nice little extra support in here when you're building a six footer that'll allow this to have extra strength on this two foot sheet of plywood that you have here, because you'll have an end, an end, and a center beam to be able to support that 24 inch span as opposed to just an end and an end. I've seen guys do 24 on center. I don't like it personally because of that reason. You get an extra support beam in here, you get an extra one over on this side too, makes your stand a lot stronger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the same side over on this end, and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Let me get these done quick so you guys can just tell. Now, the most important part of making your life easy and making this straight is to go corner to corner and measure out your corner to corner. And what you want is you want your corner to corner to be as close to identical as you can physically get it. Um, I should probably switch over to a different tape measure because this one kind of has a thin end to it. Go with one with a little bit bigger lip to catch. But go corner to corner. And then measure out. I'm at 102 and three quarters here. And since it's on camera, there's no way I can get lucky enough that this one will be at 102 and three quarters as well. That'd just be too easy. I'm at 101. So what we're gonna do is you take the two ends that are the longer 
diagonal and you push them together slightly until you end up getting two that match up. Then when you get two that match up, you take your boards and you lay them in here, just drop them in across and knock them into place to where the center of the stud lands on the center of this mark. And you're gonna go in with two screws on each end. And this is also the point where if you're gonna use truss brackets, you flip it over and you put truss brackets in from the bottom. Now, I don't usually use truss brackets unless I know something heavy is going into it um, intentionally. But this is a spot where I will typically put three screws down the side um, just to be able to add that extra strength. And we're gonna square this up a little bit. We're gonna get those dropped in, do it in quick mode so you guys don't have to sit here and watch forever. And we'll bring you back as soon as we're done with that. And we'll show you how we put the top on and then how we put the legs, cross braces and all that other stuff on. Sorry to pause you like that for a quick second, but I'll show you a little trick here. Now, on this leg right here, I've got like a quarter inch drop here. I can try pushing this top one down to see if it'll work. If not, the biggest trick I found, take it, pull it up, slide a screw underneath it, and then you kind of tap it down into place if you don't have that big of a gap. And what that screw does is it helps keep this flush across here. The more this stays flush at every single joint, the better it will be at controlling sound if you step on it, and the less chance you'll have of having a creak or squeak in your stand. And well, any deer hunter knows that's a good thing. So I'll kick you back over to the time lapse, make it quick for you, and we'll keep her going here. Now is the part where we get to attach the decking onto this or the flooring onto this. I wanted to point one thing out to you guys quick. Um, I think it'll make a big difference. There's three ways you can go about it. You can use those three inch screws that you use on the outside. The reason I don't is because there's no threads on the shank from here all the way up to the top. Meaning if any give ever gives in that plywood, the plywood's gonna end up going up and down and up and down and up and down on this and it's gonna make squeaks. Your other option, this is an inch and five ace one and it's threaded all the way to the top essentially. And I do use these on flooring. I have used them on flooring before. Um, I personally, with the three quarter inch plywood, prefer the two and a half inches. The two and a half are just long enough. They have a little bit here. So unless you way overdrive this, which is more of an issue than just anything, um, this will allow this to not move up and down because this threads will keep it from collapsing as easily. So I use the two and a half inches and the way I start out is I take the factory edge and I will line up the factory edge perfectly flush with the corner over here along this whole edge will be perfectly flush and then this corner will be lined up with the corner and then when I get this side screwed in um, I'll bring you guys back in just a second and I'll show you how I use the plywood to help make sure everything's square and you can use the end of the plywood to help shift the floor braces um, if you use the plywood correctly so I will turn around and I will get this end screwed in and I will bring you guys back over probably over on that side somewhere once it's all screwed in to show you how I shift stuff around. Now I've got that end screwed in tight and one thing you'll notice is I don't know how you'll be able to see it but Right here, I've got my finger resting on the edge of the plywood, or on the edge of the two by six. There's roughly, I'd say three eighths of an inch gap in here, um, from there to there, that I need to take out of that. Now, usually a way that straightens it out and straightens everything else out 
take this piece of plywood and give it a little pull until it gets to where you want it to be. And then once I get it where I want it to be, which is flush with this edge, I put my knee on it. And for the time being, I put one screw right down into this spot right here. And then what that'll do is that'll keep this edge as close to flush the whole length along here. And it'll allow me to keep this straight. Now you can't really see, but if I look down the side of this sheet of plywood, the end of this is actually pretty straight um, with the end right over here. So that's definitely a big plus. Um, what I'll do is I'll grab a tape measure before I screw everything down and I'll make sure it's square and I'll do a corner to corner on it. Um, I want to say it comes up to roughly 101 and 7 eighths roughly on a 6x6. Six six, but just got to make sure the numbers match. That's the big thing. And then I can kind of flex and adjust if I have to uh, to make it square. Because square makes wall assembly later so much easier in the field. So let's kick you back to the quick lap so you can see what I'm doing. And then we'll bring you back as soon as this is all screwed down. So, a day later, well, for you guys, like 30 seconds of video later, I uh, finally got these sheets of plywood on here. And one thing I was going to mention quick, uh, use chalk lines and your screw holes on the end to line up where your screws have to go. Makes life a lot easier. Uh, around the perimeter, I spaced the screws out about eh, 10 inches roughly. It's about the length of my impact. Um, in the center, I try to go more about a foot spacing in between them uh one two three four five six hey okay. yeah that works a foot uh, approximately so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna get to the part that you're gonna appreciate the most because it's gonna save you a boatload of money so make sure you stay tuned for just a few more minutes at least if nothing else so here's where I'm gonna make a deal with you okay you've made it this far and I appreciate that. Here's, here's my deal. If this tip I'm about to show you ends up saving you more than $45 to $50, you're going to do me a favor and you're going to hit that like button. If it saves you more than $60, bucks, you are going to do me another favor and you're going to share it on one of your social media platforms. So, here's the trick. In front of me, you'll see I've got some different plywood. And that one's just a hair under half inch. Looks like it's about seven sixteenths. Another seven sixteenths, half inch. Um, all these pieces of plywood, or at least all the pieces of plywood that I use for this trick are all between three eighths of an inch and three quarters of an inch. Now, the thinner the plywood, the less angle you will have to your legs. So if you're looking for like a, about an eight to 10 degree tilt, you wanna use a smaller piece of plywood like a three ace. Especially on your shorter ones, I recommend a half an inch or going up to three quarters of an inch. What you're gonna do is you're gonna shave these down. You don't want them anything, oh, I'm so untalented, I just dropped my tape measure. Well. This one's six inches. Uh, that's okay. That we can work with. These are eight. Now, anything over eight inches, I recommend ripping them down into strips. You can get away with three and a half inches, but I highly recommend doing four inches or slightly over four inches. And the reason why is you're going to use these next to a four by four. So you want it at least three and a half inches wide because that's how wide your four by four is. So. I'm gonna hit you into fast forward. I'm gonna rip a couple of these down and then I'll bring you back and show you how we finish making these spacers out so that you can keep doing this.
So now you saw me coming over here and setting this up. What I did was I measured out an inch from the blade to this block, which is gonna give me one inch cuts. And you want this much more accurate and repeatable and consistent. You want one inch. Um, like I said, if it's thinner, it won't space the legs out as much. If it's thicker, it will. If you start gaining and losing length, it's going to mess with your legs and it's going to make them twist. So that's why I go with one inch. Um, I've experimented with a few different lengths and one inch seems to work the best um, short term and long term. So I'll uh, cut up a few of these, which might be enough for me for a season. And we'll bring you back as soon as I'm done cutting that up. Now that you know what one of the greatest little do-it-yourself tools is for building deer stands or deer stand platforms or box blind platforms, now I'm going to show you how to use it. Now one plus side, if you do cut them four inches or three and a half inches, is you have a natural measuring stick essentially on the outside. So what I do is I go like this and I go like this to give myself a rough idea of how much space I'm going to have. And then I set up my screws. So at about three and a half inches in, eh, actually we're going to want to be about three inches in, I put a slightly angled screw in this way. So I shoot the top screw towards the other corner. I don't know if you can kind of see that across there. That's where I put that one. My very bottom screw, I mount straight below it, and that one goes perfectly straight in. My third screw for every corner goes in at an angle like this and when it goes in it catches the leg and it helps pull it to the corner now when I put my leg in I center my leg right in between all three of these screws but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it down on the inside here and I'll bring the camera around in just a second I'm gonna have to chop a little bit off these because these are a little bit too long for a uh, six footer so give me just a second I'll be right back okay now we got that one to the size we need let me tilt you in here a little bit that's how they end up lining up on the inside if you're looking from the top down now what I try to do actually we're gonna do this the other way I try to line them up so that they're staggered the opposite of the way the boards are in there I don't know if it really helps it maybe does in my mind so we'll do that let me bring this back out here and you're gonna repeat the pattern that you did on this side, on this side. So, you're gonna take your top screw, go in about three inches roughly, and you're gonna to wanna to angle it slightly towards this corner here. Then, your bottom screw, in line with it, perfectly straight in. And then, your last screw, kind of on the... Now this one will line up roughly right about here, just enough to miss this but enough that when you hit this it'll pull it in let me grab a four by four which i have right over here so we've got our four by four here one thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check it for straightness um what we want to do if it's not straight i ended up with a pretty straight one got a little bit of a little bit of a kick up like this so what we're gonna do we're gonna take any bends in your two in your four by four and we're gonna kick them to the outside because if we don't put them on the outside what will happen is you can end up building I've done this before with an eight footer and a ten footer I put the board wrong and then instead of it gaining base width it loses base width so this is the side that has kind of the edge to it we're gonna put it in there let me see if I can tilt this forward and get you a view down in there hopefully you guys can see down in there how that covers that and what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna drive in the bottom screws on both sides see how that pulled tight
Now, from there, this gap that you have there from those spacers on the top is gonna be there. We're gonna push this post right straight to the corner. And then we're gonna drive this screw in. And we're gonna drive the top screw in on the other side. Now, like I said, if you decide not to use the Spax legs, which I highly, highly advise against, I, I definitely recommend 100% using the Spax legs. If you don't, please minimum for your own safety, use three and a half inch screws instead of three inches or two and a half or anything less than that. I mean, you can use four inches if you want. The reason I typically avoid them is these tend to have less shear strength than the spax legs do. So we've got this corner in. I mean, you can see I'm, I'm moving it pretty hard and it's hardly budging. So it pulls them tight. It just, from here, I'm gonna get the other three legs done. One thing I will recommend, I go around, I set up all the corners and all the screws first. Then I bring the posts over and put the posts in place. But as soon as we're done with this, I'll show you how I do the cross bracing and set up the cross bracing, and then she'll be ready to flip over. Now from here, what you wanna do is you wanna take a tape measure, and we're gonna We're going to play around a whole bunch because it's going to probably take about 10 tries. So if we go seven foot end to end, it'll take us almost exactly corner to corner. So that puts us right here at seven foot. So if I go and I cut these just a hair shorter than that, say 82 inches, That'll give me cross braces for each of these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and we're gonna cut a bunch of, we're gonna cut eight 82 inch cross braces for this so we can work on our cross bracing next. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. I'll skip right to it. We'll get the materials cut and we'll bring you right back when we start assembling these. Well, we are on the final leg of the legs. We're on the point where I show you how we do cross braces. And I'm gonna show you a nifty little trick. So if you're right-handed, I always recommend putting the drill down on the right-hand side. Start on the inside when you do your cross braces. And the reason why is you want to be able to take this, mount it in here, and then move around. Now, since you're right-handed, if you use your left hip or your left thigh to hold the board in place, you can put your first screw in and then you can move over here to the other side and put your next two screws in. And the one plus side to doing it this way, and I'll show you in just a second, is since your right hand side's always on the bottom when you go on to your next one it's not going to interfere with this right here so you take this one and you put it in here like this just like you did the first one use your leg to hold it in place put your first screw in now the only reason i put one screw in instead of two down there to start is it allows me to adjust the height of this a little bit based on where I want this board to be. You put your two screws in here. And you come back, you put your screw in down here and you finish up. I'm gonna kick you guys into a little bit faster speed quick so that you don't have to sit and watch me put in one screw at a time. Now is the fun part, trying to catch some video. Now, 
if there's one thing you'll notice right there notice how on each of these joints where these cross braces meet up there's a space make sure there's a space if there's not a space you will ruin your hunt when you go to move and your weight shifts in the stand like this one's pretty solid i'm giving it a pretty good shake and i can barely move it but when you've got a 240 250 pound person or two of them in this stand and you go to move around if these are touching they will figure out a way to squeak and they will ruin your hunt so make sure you do that as far as this stand goes this is as far as i'm going to go with this video with this base um like i've said before a few times i'm sure do me a favor hit that like button and definitely subscribe if you find the information useful enough i mean it costs you nothing and apparently it helps me for some reason because it makes youtube all happy but um check out the other videos in this playlist i'll try to link the playlist in the description down below and it will have all the information that you need um, on how to design these, how I build these, how I build the walls, how I build the roof, everything. It's, it's a completely inclusive thing. Uh, I'd show you how to do the ladder for this, but I already have a video on the ladder, so you can go check that out as well. Now time for you to watch me flip it over.